is this in simplest form or is it not? Yep, simplest form. Must be Uh, we're looking to see if they share any factors. 24 and 25 don't share any factors. In fact, no two numbers that are right next to each other that differ by one are going to share any factors except for one. Okay. Do you have a question? Yeah. Hey. Oh, no, I was going to say that. No. Oh, say what? I was going to say no, it's not. Okay. Yeah. So it is in simple form. It can't be simplified. It is, uh, it's good. Okay, so now number... Uh, 21, okay, times six. So we'll just kind of follow along with their work and see where they went wrong. So the next step looks like this, 1 6 times x over 6, and we have 1 6 here as well, times 3 fourths. All right, so 3 fourths is the same, x over 6 is the same, so they must be doing what to both sides? Is that six? Oh, sorry, you already did that. What is it? What, what are they doing? You may be here for a long time if nobody answers what I'm asking. I don't have it. Multiplying? Five. By six. No, by three fourths. No, three fourths is already there. Right? Three fourths carried through from the, the first oh. step here. Cross so they're multiplying by, you know, it's not cross by. So they multiply by both sides, right? Multiply by the I'm asking what they did. What are they doing? Oh. I'm multiplying by one over, one over six. Okay, so they're multiplying by one over six on the right side. You can see how x over six is exactly the same. All well, that's new <coughs> is multiplied by one six. Multiply by one six. Okay. Can you multiply by one six on both sides? Can you? Yeah, yes. Should. Okay. Let's do it. Let's actually do it. All right. On this side, we multiply, how do we multiply fractions? Yeah. What? You don't know how to multiply fractions? Across. across. Mm, across. What do you mean across? Directly across. Yeah, straight across. Straight. Tops and tops, bottoms and bottoms. Numerator times the numerator, denominator times the denominator. So, uh, 1 times x is x. And 6 times 6 is 36. 3 times 1 is 3. 6 times 4 is 24. That's what they should get. If they multiply by 1, 6 on both sides, what do they get? Oh. They're then under the impression that 1, 6 times x over 6 gives you x. It doesn't, right? We did the work, and it does not happen. So now let's try and go like engineer what they were trying to do. If you want to get just x on this side, what would you have to do to get x on the right side? Um, can I borrow Megan Bowman real quick? Sure. What would you have to do to get x by itself on the right side? Oh, sure, here. I mean, I guess. Let's back up. Back up to here. Multiply, then divide by three. Times six on both sides, remember? Uh, we talked about not only thinking in terms of cross multiply. Cross multiply correct? Sure. People get it wrong all the time because they forget, right? Um, they forget what they're actually trying to do. What we're trying to do is solve for x. If we multiply by 6, 6 divided by 6 leaves us with x times 1 over 1 times 1. That's just x. On this side, we can cancel the, the factors of 2 in 4 and 6. So this gives us 3, this gives us 2. So we get 9 over 2. That's what x is. Could we cross multiply? Of course we could. Right? And I'm not going to mark you wrong if you use cross multiplication. But I would encourage you, if you're going to do it, think about it. If you're just using it and you can't explain why it works, I would really, like, if I were the king of the world, I wouldn't let math students do things they don't understand how they work. If they don't understand how they work, they would have to be able to explain to a fifth grader why it works. Why does cross multiplication do okay. And we will look at why when we do 3.6, because that's all about cross multiplication. Okay. And we're going to end there. Okay. 
that was 2142. 6 plus n over 60 equals 15. And in this section, I want you to be thinking, and you be thinking, what am I trying to do? What are we trying to do? What is our ultimate goal in this equation? Get a by itself. Just want to know what n is worth. Okay? So if we look at that side with n, I'm going to get everything else that's not n off of that side. So, Seth, do you have something to do with So, don't you like solve for n and then the answer for n, you add 6? That's what I did. You solve for n. So 15 on both sides? Yeah. Okay, so multiply by 15 on both sides. And not 15, only 15 is 15. 15 over 1. Okay, on the side, let's see. What's 15 times 15? Oh, wait a second. I did times by 60, my bad. Oh, by 60? Yeah. <laughs> now let's see what happens if you multiply by 60. 60 over 1, multiply by 60. This side, let's see, 60 and 90 have a uh, 30 in common. Uh, 2 and 3, uh, 3 and 15, I share a factor that leaves 5. So on this side, we have 10. Over here, what happens when we multiply this fraction by 60? Rewrite this left side to help you see what happened. How do we multiply fractions again? So I'm going to write these. I'm going to write this as two different fractions, but it's going to be the same result. So in the numerator, I have 60 times uh, 6 plus 10. I'm going to write it as 60 over 60 times 6 plus n over 1. Okay. I rewrote it. It's not. It doesn't look the same. It looks different. But is it equal to the same thing? Let's see. Across the top of this, these two fractions, if I multiply these together, I get 60 times 6 plus n. Is that what I have in the numerator here? 60 yeah. times 6 plus n. If I multiply the numerator, that's what I get. Okay, in the denominator, I would have 1 times 60. Is that the same thing as taking 60 times 1? Yeah. It's the same. Okay. So, what's 60 divided by 60? One. We get 1 times 60 plus n over 1, or not 60 plus n, 6 plus n. Well, that would be the same as saying the 60s cancel. Uh -huh. Okay, so n, you subtract 6 on both sides, and n is 4. And then we can be done. Seth, you were saying maybe you plug it back in, you add 6. I don't need to know what the numerator is, I want to know what n is. Just n. Uh, okay. Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Just solving for n. Right. If I wanted to know how big that numerator was, I could sure, certainly I could add 6 to 4 and it would be 10. And the numerator would be 10. But I just want to know what n is. Right? Okay. What are we doing? We're solving for n. We cancel out the 60, like Seth said. Cancel that out. If you're not sure why that cross cancels like that, See how I can rewrite it as 60 divided by 60. That's what the canceling is. It's the 60 dividing that 60. 60 divided by 60 is 1, leaving just the 6 plus n that we had in the numerator there. Um, okay. Um, so we have 435 representatives in the U.S. House. Of them, 6 are from Kentucky. Find the ratio of the number of representatives from Kentucky to the number of, number of total representatives. So, you know how the House of Representatives works? Nope. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, the House of Representatives are split up into groups, aren't they? You have the blue people and the red people. Well. <laughs> I, I, I guess saying how do you know? I forgot their names. Up there. How do you know how many representatives each state has? That's what oh, I wanted. Well, 
is to decide on how big their state is. Like Montana has one. Montana has two. three. Yeah, I thought we had three. three. We had three. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know, you're right. We have one representative and, and three. two. Two is it how? The Senate. Two in the Senate. Mm -hmm. Every state yeah. gets two senators, and then you get representatives based on your um, population. Yeah. Who's our sheriff? That's like totally different thing. The sheriff is like not a state. No, and like, or, it depends how big the state is. It depends on how big the state is. Yeah. To how many representatives you get. Yeah. So Kentucky has six compared to our one, right? And so what it's asking is, what is the ratio of Kentucky representatives to all the representatives for the entire United States? Is that ratio? Right? The one is six representatives from Kentucky to the two hundred and forty. Two oh. Sorry. Four hundred and thirty-five in the entire state. That's the ratio. Six Kentucky representatives to all of the uh, the U.S. representatives. And by the way, six of these guys are yeah, the guys from Kentucky, right? Ask. Yeah, six of those guys are the guys from Kentucky. Uh, and then we see if they, if they have anything in common. They don't have a two in common, right? That's not divisible by two. Uh, are they divisible by three? Yes, it is divisible. I got you. 135? 145. 45. So two Kentucky to the total 145. Like, that's the ratio. For every two Kentucky representatives, there are 145 representatives from the whole U.S. Um, So we'll go the route that probably most of you went since we're in the cross multiplication section. Um, that would be cross multiplying 18 times d minus 13 to 6 times b plus 13. Okay? If you use it and you don't understand why cross multiplication is like mathematically justifiable, you just use it in a trick that you don't understand. You should be able to justify it. Um, let's just We'll, we'll come back and, and figure out why it is we're allowed to do this. Why is it mathematically true to be able to do that? But for now, we'll just solve. Okay, so what, what do we do to solve for D? Um, distributive properties. Minus 60, we'd write up with how much would we have on this side? Zero. Zero. So we'd just kind of be doubling up on the work. If we just go ahead and do subtract 18d, now we've got well, we've got negative d on that side, but that's okay. We've got negative 12d equals negative 312. But I've been negative 12. And we got. I got you. Okay, 
So that's what the work like like for someone who uses cross multiplication, but doesn't quite know why it works. I just want to remind you, I hope you understand. Remind you that when I multiplied a fraction that had a denominator of sixty by sixty, what happened? Cancel the denominator. So you could remember that if you take any fraction and you multiply it by the number that's in the denominator, what happens? Cancel the denominator. It's left with three. Okay. If I want to get rid of a denominator, I will multiply it by the denominator, whatever the denominator is. Because what happens? Four divides four, leaving us with one times three. What happens back here? Sixty is divided by sixty, leaving us with one times six plus n. It's a pretty useful thing if we want to not have denominators to multiply by something that will cancel that denominator out. So if I have this equation. Have these denominators. I don't like those denominators, especially since the, va the variable I'm trying to solve for is in the denominator. So what happens if I multiply in this fraction that has d plus 13 in the denominator by d plus 13? d plus 13, whatever it is, is divided by d plus 13. It's just identical to d plus 13. So you plug 5 in for d, plug 7 in for d, plus 12 in for d here and here. You're just going to get the same number, and it's going to get divided by itself. Going to cancel out, or it's going to be one. Well, that's great for this side. I have to multiply by the same thing on this side. D plus thirteen. One. So this six times d plus thirteen. That's really from just multiplying both sides by d plus thirteen to cancel out that denominator. But I still have a d minus thirteen denominator on the right side. So how do I cancel out that denominator? minus 13 divided by d minus 13, 1. That just leaves the 6 and the d plus 13. Of course, I have to do the same thing on both sides. All right, it doesn't cancel anything out here. We're just left with this d minus 13. But we don't have any denominators left. That's a good deal. Where the denominator is 1. So what do we have here? We have 18 times d minus 13 equals 6 times d plus 13 look the same as this? Of course it does. It looks identical. But I think, I think it's funny, teenagers, sorry to categorize you as teenagers, but we tend to often question, why are we doing this? Why do I have to do this? Why would I do it that way? If your parents want you to do a certain chore, you may ask yourself, why are we doing this? Okay. And when it comes to math, you're all about, just tell me what to do. I won't question it at all. I just just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Well, say even in math, question everything. Just question it. Why does that work? Why are we allowed to do that? And then explain it to yourself, or ask someone to explain it to you, and then explain it to someone else. And you just use a bag of tricks. That's all it is. Just a bag of tricks. Might as well just be a magician who doesn't read the instructions to his magic trick and he doesn't even know how it works? You got a net in the sleeve to pull out the paper. But he doesn't know that. Well, Somehow he performs his magic trick so he's like not even knowing. He amazes himself every time. That worked. Or I'm amazed. I have no idea how. Pull the skunk out of the net. That would be great. Whenever you can get a skunk into a, an auditorium or something. Mm -hmm. Drug it, then you will get straight. So, okay, so let's follow. This. this is where we're supposed to find a mistake. You got 18b equals 14 b plus 2. Okay. So that's what they have written. Any mistakes? Yeah, there's supposed to be a mistake. We're supposed to find a mistake. Well, yeah, there is a 
What is it? Quantity plus two. Good job, Ashley. Distributing the 14. So 18b equals 14b plus 28. Uh, minus 14b minus 14b. Uh, 4b equals 28b equals 7. Actually, but they got 0.5. Silly. It's really loud. It's <laughs> really um, That was. use cross multiplication, but I'm not ignorant of what I'm really doing. What I'm really doing is multiplying both sides by 11 to cancel out this denominator of 11, and multiplying both sides by negative 2 to cancel out this negative 2. And when all said and done, the 11 times c minus 8 equals negative 2 times 11 minus 4c. It's really encouraging to be able to explain that. So we distribute the 11, you got 11c minus 88. Factor 11c equals 88. Eight equals negative 22 plus 8c. Subtract 8c, we've got 3c minus 88 equals negative 22. Add 88 to both sides, then we get 66, and c equals. Like to come up and show us how to do it, or even give this a pad a try. And that one's that is fun. Just hand this to you, and you do it from your desk. That's a lot of encouragement. Anybody game? Who wants to return your phone? I think Seth wants to do it. I feel like it. Let's go, Seth. Seth. No. Yeah. Seth, 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 I just don't even know what to do. I'll try if I get some help. It doesn't work like a mouse. It's just like that, that point on the screen is always that point on the screen. Okay. That makes sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't need to like sweep it across like a mouse. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Try to hover above there. Uh -huh. See where you are. And you're right. You press all the way down. Okay. Let me think about this. That's a really good idea, by the way. Yeah. Well, I didn't. I'll bring it to the desk. So, like, can I just start writing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just press down and it'll start writing. <laughs> like, do that thing. Cross multiply. <laughs> yeah, that's my version of it. And, um, no, this is not working out. <laughs> Hover and put the pen where you want it, and then just press down. And you start okay. Writing. You do 6 times negative 10, we give you negative 60. And then over W, that's what I got. Over W? Yeah. Do W. Plus W is what? <laughs> Plus 2w. Dude, this thing's hard. <laughs> Wait, I cannot understand. Yeah. That looks like a bite sheet. Yeah, I mean, you can go up there. <laughs> Dude, that thing is tough. So uh, you multiply 6 by negative 10, you got negative 60. Yeah. Plus 2w. That's what you're saying? No. Two, oh. two, like That's G O. What? <laughs> like G o. Over. Yeah, like over. Over W. Yeah. Yeah, but I got this problem wrong, so. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that knows it. If we cross it, multiply. Okay, Ashley. Ashley. Okay, go up there. That is complicated. Yeah, okay. Depends on that clear box on the podium. I think school that I am it takes some practice. Okay, so. Practice. Thank you. Any 
because she's in cross multiplication and distribution at the same time. Tell them to clap in, in unison, yeah. they will do it. They yeah. all they have to subconsciously agree to clap at a certain rhythm, and they will you will get them to do it. They will clap in unison, even if there's thousands of them, and nobody's saying like follow this, you know, this light. When this light blinks, you clap. They just on the clap. I didn't ask you to do it, I'm clap. just saying it's an interesting phenomenon. We will not be observing here today. Okay. Are there any other questions from these two sections? I want you to think more so that about when I'm trying to get W, X, and whatever isolated. I'm trying to get it by itself. Do what it takes to do that. Okay? Because just because uh, uh, an equation has two fractions doesn't mean we can cross multiply. Uh, it would be helpful to remember at least very least that whenever you multiply a fraction by what? It's so it's denominator. It's by its denominator. What happens? Cancel. Cancel even just the numerator. Okay? At least remember that. That word you know if you remember anything. And in the Okay, so can we cross multiply? Of course we can, um, but I would like to think I would like you to think, and it's going to save you some time here. I just want to get x by itself. How do I get x by itself? What's on that side with x? How do I get rid of it? Yes, that multiply by eight. Multiply by eight. Oh, nice. Yeah. Eight multiplied by eight. What happens? Cancel each other out. Eight divides eight. On this side, we could do uh, 8 Four. and 12. They have a 4 in common, so 2 and 3. We get 10. Ready? Um, well, what? They cross multiply, they have like a decimal. So I got it. Decimal is 3.3. All right. Now, uh, if we do use cross multiplication, it's probably gonna make things happen a little faster, okay? Uh, but I don't want to use cross multiplication, making you think that that is how you do it. I've probably made that point enough. So x times nine, seven times thirteen. I don't know what that is. Is it fifty-one? No, it's eighty-one. What? Not eighty-one. Ninety-one. Okay, can we divide by 9? That I should have written 9 there. X equals 9. Decimal would be 10.1 repeating. Yeah. I'm just going to remind you because I just love math so much. I need to help check. Well, I, it's not my I do love that so much. 
multiply both sides by x minus 8 because x minus 8 divided by x minus 8 is 1. So it just leaves 12 on this side. Right? But at the same time, I multiply this side by x minus 8. Got to do the same thing to both sides. Doesn't cancel anything out, but, but that's OK, because I don't have a denominator over here. At the same time, I multiply this guy by 5. 5 divides 5. And on this side, I multiply by 5. Doesn't cancel anything out, but see, all the way across both sides of the equation, I have managed to get a denominator of 1. And that's very nice. Because I have 5 times 1 times 12. That's 16. Over 1 times 1 times 1. OK, I've got a denominator of 1. I don't need to write that. I have uh, 1 times 9 times x minus 8 over 1 times 1 times 1. And so I managed to cancel out all the denominators. 60 equals distribute. Uh, I'm going in 72. Add 72 to both sides. It's 132 minus x. Questions so far? Mm -hmm. About anything? Yes. Number four right there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's like an application. Gluten mm -hmm. free pancake recipe. Uh, calls for one cup of buckwheat flour. Has anybody used buckwheat flour before in their cooking? No. Uh, you guys cook gluten free? What? No. no. No? You just use some buckwheat flour? I have a four yeah. right now. Yeah. So good when you put in the oven and just eat it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so good. That sounds funny. I've never heard of that. Buckwheat or buckwheat <laughs> flour? Okay, all right. <laughs> I like crepes. Make those a lot. They're really good. Yeah, it's good. Buckwheat? Yeah. I have a four. It tastes four. Oh, come on. That wasn't that good, but. All right. So my wife is, uh, is gluten intolerant. So we cook uh, gluten free a lot. She does. I'm sorry. A lot of cooking, but. Um, <laughs> it, it uses one cup of buckwheat flour to eight pancakes, okay? Um, if you want instead to make 12 pancakes instead of eight, how many cups of buckwheat do you need? One and a half. One and a half? One half? Yeah. One? One and a half. One point five. Okay. So, how did we set that up? Oh, right here. Yeah. You do one over eight. Yes, one is to eight. As is equal to x over 12. x is to 12. And you cross multiply. Okay, 8x equals 12. And then divide by 8, both x sides. equals 3x. Yeah. Very good. Can we set it up differently? We could. We could. We could say that x cups to 1 cup is the same as 12 cups to 8 cups. That way, that ratio is also true. And it would, if we cross multiply, we get the exact same thing. 8x equals 12. And x equals 3 halves. You can set it up 1 over x equals 8 over 12. Same thing. You can set 8 over 1 equal to 12 over x. Same thing. Okay. These ratios are all the same. These proportions, I suppose. Okay? Any questions about any of that proportion? Wait. Yes. Okay. Well, this is not, I'll ask it after the next question. Oh, the next. It's on the next one. That would be yeah. All right. So we got an equation that has letters in it. I'm surprised how much mistake there was here. If we solve for x, pretend that b is some number. What would you do to get x by itself here? Minus five. So, so we would minus 5, minus 5. No different with this equation, just because it's a, a b. It's just that 7 minus b is not going to be 2 or 3 or just some nice number. It's just going to be b. x equals 7b. What does 7b mean? 7 so times whatever the number is. 
forever be, which is like forever number b. Is that how is that how we came about this new expression? What do we do? We subtracted the b. Yeah. So it's seven, 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 seven minus b. Wow. Uh, okay. Yes. So b just put a question mark by it. So can I like show how to do the problem? Yeah, you got a different color? Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be very helpful. All right. So that's the, that's the mistake I was seeing most often. 7 minus b turns into 7b or negative 7b. Basically, subtraction turns into multiplication. And you're saying, basically, 7 minus b is the same as 7 times b. Try that with any two numbers. So 7 minus 2, is that equal to 7 times 2? No. No, it's not. Okay. So be careful. Let's, let's not make that mistake. If you subtract b, it's minus b. Yeah. Okay, so if they did 7 times b, would that be like 4 or 3? Uh, it would be like 2. 2? Two? Okay, now we're solving for x again. What's first? You just strip it. To strip it. What do we get? Uh, six, six x and negative ten. And plus six. Plus six. And then equal to four x. Uh -huh. Plus eight. Very good. Okay. And then, oh, am I doing this whole problem? Uh, yes. Okay, and then I did minus six. Minus six from both sides. Yeah. Six x minus ten is still there. Four x. Plus two. And then I did uh, plus ten. Plus x. Six x equals four x equals or plus sorry plus twelve. Uh, and then what did I do from here? Yeah, subtract four x from both sides. Two x equals twelve. And then divide by two. X equals six. Yeah. Nice. Good job, Ryan. Good job. Ooh, that is so close. I have three? Yeah. Three out of the whole thing. Oh, I got three. Well, that's wrong. Yeah, six. I said something to turn it over. Six. That's a simple mistake. Big mistake. Subtract a six. Um, Okay, so here's Donna. What do you think Donna was trying to do in the red? So you, you hit the nail on the head. I think what she was trying to do was cross multiply, right, Ashley? <laughs> cross multiply, uh, but she didn't remember to distribute, so she'd be 60 equals 9x minus 72. Um, oh, what mistake should she make? She doesn't distribute. Seth? I have a quick question about yeah. those. Uh, do we get graded on those? No. It's a, it's a fine time. Now that we're in high school, this transition to the idea that you're responsible for a lot of things or something. No, I don't. Uh, I don't grade your, your notes. If you're an adult and you go to some conference, then we get credit for notes, right? Let's just take notes. Why? Because we want to remember this stuff. Good question. Answer that. It's Javier. Fun name. Uh, Solve this proportion incorrectly. Uh, I shouldn't say proportion. I should have just said equation. That's okay. Um, what mistake does he make in red? Yes. So just 
just what we talked about. Right? It already came up organically. We, we uh, realized that sometimes people will say 7 minus b, they'll subtract the ample side, and then it just turns into multiplication. And that should be, should look like x equals 7 minus b. Okay. What should Javier have done instead of the blue step? just as much as all of you. Do you think she has no ideas she has some idea. at all? She has some idea. I have some idea. idea. She idea. could try something. Right? Don't want to do crazy things like add pumpkin to both sides. That doesn't make any sense. What about giraffe? But she could certainly try something. And a lot of times, I'll promise you, if you have an attitude of, I'm going to try something, I'm going to see I can get a little bit further. If you just write the next step, just a wild guess, I think you'll have an idea for the next step. And you'll see that, and you'll have an idea for the next step, and so on. Yeah. She should have distributed. Just try that. I think distribution is so sort of reflex by now that we would at least try to distribute. Right? And if we distribute 6x minus 10 plus 6 equals 4x plus 8, I think I've got it. Well, I think I do this. I'll do this next. I'll do this next. I can try this. I can try this. I can try this. I can. Maybe it won't be the fastest way anybody has ever solved this equation. It certainly will be. Yeah, this is the one that we did. Okay, well, I did first. That's why we're not going to go all the way through that. Okay, now let's see what's going on. Bree makes the same kind of mistake, guys. What is the mistake in red? So here is some red, and here is some red. What's going on there? She subtracted 4 instead of add 4. Subtract 4 instead of add 4. Oh, so on the 8. eight. Like on the 8. So here she subtracted 4 from 8 instead of she should have added. Why would she subtract 4 instead of add 4? Okay. She trying methods out. Ashley? Oh. How so? Like. She went, yeah, she wasn't thinking, how will I cancel out this 4? She was thinking 8, negative 4, 8 minus 4, 4. Okay. Same thing here. 6, 3x, 4x, 10x. All right? 
Well, I, <coughs> I don't really like to speak in terms of moving things. Okay, but she moved 4x over to the other side. If she wants to do something like that, she needs to cancel on that side and do the same thing on this side, and now she'll have like still a balanced equation. Okay? Think about it this way. To get 10x, she, she would have to add 4x, right? To get 10x. Okay, you add 4x on one side, you have to add it to the other side. Okay? So we should, we'd have 8x over here if we wanted to keep it balanced. That, okay, so now that's true, but it's a lot more work. Okay? What she's really done by adding 4x here and not adding 4x, is she's like kind of the equivalent of put 8x over here so there's none over here. Really throw it off. The equation is really messed up. And I've seen that a few times that I wanted to bring it to your attention because it's a common mistake. I want you to let, let, let you know you're not alone here if you're doing that. But I think maybe just slow down and think if I want to cancel this out, what do I do? I subtract for it, subtract for it. Okay? I think that's the last thing. No. Oh, here's another thing. Okay, so distribute, good. Combine negative 10 and 6, we get negative 4. Okay, um, and add 4 to both sides, right? That's, we can see that's what happened here. All right, what was the mistake in red, this red right here? Be simplified. Yeah. Yeah. Did we do what we're trying to do? Oh, okay. Shouldn't she have done the four instead of six? Done the four? Yeah, like, oh wait, no, never mind. I meant like subtract the four instead of dividing by six. Uh, so when she got here, she should have done what instead? Subtracted the four x instead of dividing by six x. Alright, when we. It, it, one thing that I think will highlight the mistake here is to say what you just did. You have x equals 4x plus 12 over 6. You just solve for x, but in your solution is another x. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Uh, I was talking to my algebra 2 class about the similar mistake, and uh, one student said, it's like saying, like, what's a bus, right? x, what's a bus? What, what's a bus? Well, a bus is a bus. <laughs> times four plus 12 over six. Like you're using x to define x. Until I know what x is, how can I know what x is? You can't. Right, so we need to get all the x's on one side together alone. Okay, together uh, equals 12 and x equals six. So you can't say x is equal to something with x in it. We're going to solve for x, we need to have just x on one side and then no x is on the other side. We might have some other letters and stuff, but we won't have any x. We'll just have x by itself on one side and everything else will be on the other side. And that was it. So, uh, did we learn something? Or does that bring up any questions anybody has? You have that problem as well? No, I had it good. No, oh, you had, had it good. good. I had it good. I was good at that problem. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing only. Only somewhere around there. That's why there's only 250. There's 70 freshmen, I'm pretty sure. Somewhere around freshmen. That's like, well, 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 well
So you know how like schools are like A schools, B schools? Yeah. How does that range on like the total number of students together or just high school? High school. Wow. So we're we're we're, uh, we're B. Okay. Uh, so if there's 250 students in the school, and you guys are, we counted 13. Yeah. 14. 14. 15. 13. I got. I got. 13. Okay. Let's say today, just the people here today. So 13 present today. When you done? Now you may just immediately jump to the answer. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And I want you to just hold on for a second. Okay. We're going to talk about the percentage uh, that this class makes, the people in this room, what percentage they are of the whole school. Okay. Right. Now, I want to point out that while this is an easy thing, I want you to understand. So. Um, what does, what does percent mean? There are 13 students in this class, so 250 students in the school. Then, if we broke that down to per hundred, like for every uh, every so many students, there's a hundred overall students. So, for every this many people in the class, there's a hundred in the entire student body. What is that number? That's what percent. We're trying to figure out what x is. We're trying to figure out what x is. How do we get x by itself? Multiply, like multiplying by 100 in fact. Multiply by 100. Whoops. That cancels the 100 here. Multiply by 100 over here. Uh, we get. One what thirteen hundred? Well, let's not. Let's, let's look at the way we actually do percents. We have thirteen over two fifty. What's thirteen over two fifty? Every 5.2 of you in this class, there's 100 people in the entire student body. And that entire student body also includes you. Okay. Yes. So that means right now you're teaching 5.2% of the school. Yes. Of the high school. Yes, the high school. So in this class today, right now. So this row, Trent, like, sets on. Sets on. Trent, too. I think um, there's a little more. My arm totally has a brain. I think your, your arm, arm is his arm, head. My arm is pretty low. Arm and head. Yeah. His head and his arm, but then it's pretty Maybe makes point two. Okay. This row, Trent, says arm and head. That is, for that many people, 
There are a hundred in the entire student body. It's okay. It's kind of cool to think, actually. Yeah. Um, Wait, so you should find out how many kids you teach a day. What like, what percent of school you teach a day? Oh, uh, I don't have any repeat customers. That's for sure. We have a class in I don't know, with about averaging 20 a class, you got 60 in a day. 60 in a day, so 60 to the 250 is equal to some x per 100. Figure it out, Dad. Probably 100. 24%. Ooh. No decimal? Yeah, just exactly 24? Yeah, exactly 24%. 24%. 24%. I got that too, Jerry. You're smart. Yeah, that deserves an A. Thank you. Huh? Hey. <laughs> so, yeah, every day I, I teach almost a quarter of the of the group of people in the school. Day. Um, now. Could, but then you're just gonna make more work for yourself. Because then you don't get the decimal, you only get fifty-two percent. You shouldn't get fifty-two percent because it's oh, five point two percent. Maybe too many zeros. I think. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so we can set it up like a proportion, which is what it is. Proportion means two fractions equal each other, or two ratios equal each other. Okay. So uh, 43 is to 212, as some percentage is to 100, because it means whatever number is per 100. So, but notice every time I want to find out a percentage, I set up this ratio. So maybe we don't set up the exact, and then I have to solve for x. Like, let's not solve for x every time. Let's write it so that x is solved for, right? So, well, we'll do it this one time. We'll multiply by 100. We'll multiply by, notice, what are we doing every time we solve for x? We're multiplying by 100 on both sides, eh? Wouldn't it just be easier to take 43 divided by 212? And then? And then move the. Well, move the decimal place over twice is yeah. multiplying by 100. Yeah, but that's just faster and easier. That's exactly the same thing. But faster and easier. <laughs> if, it, if by faster and easier you mean exactly the same time and exactly the same ease, then yeah. That's yeah, true. Really so 43 divided by 212 is what? Is what? 43 divided by 212. Yep. 20 point, no. 43 oh, divided 20, by 212. 0.2081. Okay, let's go that far. Times, Hayden, you're saying, why don't we just multiply, or why don't we just move the decimal place over after we get this? Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna multiply by 100, which in short means move the decimal place over twice. So, 20.28%, yes? This is like, can't you round the two up to a three? Because it's eight, would you sure. just round it up? Okay. I guess it depends on what you're wanting or what you're asked for. Okay. Okay, let me put this to you. $20 off or 20% off? That, it, it all depends how much the product is. I really have is that right? Yeah. Why does that matter? Well, because if it's the product is like 100 bucks. Oh, if it's 100 bucks. You just oh, wait, no, no, 120. 120 bucks. 120 bucks. Okay, then you get then the thing would be twenty dollars if or a hundred dollars. Uh-huh. Just do that. And then uh hundred is one fourth. Yes? Isn't there like a fraction thing where it's like two is only 
think that's kind of silly, really, because we studies have shown if we teach math in a way that we look for key words, weakens our understanding of math. Oh, like, you know, certain words <laughs> right. What I'm saying is correct to this situation. We're looking for key words. We're looking for the word this and is and of and that and to and all that kind of stuff. I say, oh, I got this. One. Let's set up the, the equation so that it's, it's true and it's all for x. Or, it's like short. Set? This is about it. So if it's uh, above, if it's like a huge amount, I would definitely do twenty percent off. A huge amount, like a thousand off, million, a million. <laughs> then you know you get a lot of cash back. Uh, you get a lot of cash back because twenty percent off of a million. A lot. Is like, what's the most important thing to realize in this situation about twenty percent of a million? Let's go back to the window. What are we trying to decide here? What to go with. Yeah, what to go with. So you go to 20% because it is cheaper. You get more off. You get more off than $20. the $20. Yeah. Plus so depending on the amount. Could be buying a Lamborghini. For buy a Lamborghini and they give you a 20% off coupon on a little flimsy white piece of paper that they cut out of a newspaper. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> you don't think that that's going to happen. <laughs> okay, so what do you think on this chair? Which would you take? 20%. Oh, that is so easy. 20%? 20% off. Not $20? 20%. What kind of dollar amount would you take the $20 instead of 20%? Like 20, 20 bucks. $20? <laughs> sure. It would be free if I took the $20 coupon? Yeah. What's the breaking point? Like, when is it exactly the same thing? $20. Anything. $100. $20 is 20% of $100. So at $100? Whatever, it doesn't make any difference. You just take either one. What's that? Pokemon card deck. How about this? 20 bucks. 20, what? 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Okay. So, let's see. Avengers. Wait, let's just use. Just out of curiosity, where did you get that deal from? I didn't. Some guy named Dan Meyer did. Very smart guy. Uh, Where's he from? Florida? $139.99, $139.99. What is 20% of $139.99? A number? Yeah, that's a number. It's like, um, it's like, let's set up the proportion. 139, we want to find 20% of that, right? Okay, well, it should be equal to 20, to 100, right? 20%. Sure. Yes. All right. Okay, so is it, it should be like 139.99 to x? Or is x the part of 139.99? x is part of it, just like 20 is part of 100, x is part of 139.99. Solve for x? Solve for x? Yeah. Solve for x. Multiply by 139.99 to cancel 139.99 on both sides. Yeah. X equals 20 divided by 100, which is the decimal place to the left, twice. 0.2 times 139.99. depend on the wording, but it just depends on which is the part, which is the whole. Which is the part, and which is the whole. If I want to know, and Caitlin's right, there, there, you, we could write some equation with is's and of's's and all that kind of stuff. But, but if you just really think what's easier, what, what's easier. Right, but I'm not looking for what's easier, I'm looking for personal. Do you understand what the situation is talking about? Uh, say you want to find what is 43% of 
97.2. Set up the proportion saying, OK. Oh, that was my Let's see. We know we're going to have something per 100, right? That's the percent number. OK. Well, we know we want to wind up with 43%. That means 43 parts to 100 parts. 43, 43 to 100. On this side, what's 897? Is it the part or is it the whole? It's the whole. You sure? No. Oh. Who is sure about what it is? Is it the part or is it the whole? It's the whole. It's the whole. You're right. It's the entire thing. I want to figure out what is the, the piece of 897.2 that's the same as 43 to 100. x is equal to, well, we just multiply 0.43, right? 43 divided by 100 by 897.2. x equals, what do we get? Okay. About what percent is 396? of 253. In this instance, what is like the part and what is the whole? We're looking for a percent. We know we're going to have 100 involved there. I want to know what the percent is, right? I want to know what the part of 100 is. What's the whole? Yes, yeah, very good. 253 is the whole, and 396 is quote the part. It's more than actually the part is I can read them. Right? Yeah. Oh man, that will tell us.